people and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is a care collaboration on this Angraecum nidieri orchid. The collaboration on this orchid is with Ninja Orchids, Ed's Orchids, and Orchidea. All of us have very different uh, growing environments, so be sure to check them out and uh, hopefully you'll find a video that resonates more with your growing environment. Personally, my I grow everything indoors. I live in New York City where we have very hot and humid summers and pretty uh, cold, dry winters. So I'm going to be sharing how I care for this orchid, uh, what I've experienced, and where I've had success with it. So this angraecum is somewhat new to me. I got this as a gift from my friend Ray. and. Um, I've had it in my collection just for a couple of months. It's pretty new. Um, what I've been noticing with this orchid is that it really enjoys humidity. So as you can see over here, these were very viable roots and they dried out, unfortunately. Um, so I need to do a better job of keeping the humidity up for this orchid. I got it uh, towards the end of winter uh, where things were very dry but I'm noticing a lot of new roots coming in. So this is growing. I think it's happy. I've kept it in its original uh, pot where it's a very airy bark mix where I've added um, just some sphagnum moss at the top to help it out. But what I've noticed is that the circuit needs a lot of air. So I haven't repotted it into anything that's too, too, too um, constricting for the roots. And um, I find it to be a very tough orchid. So I went away for about eight days, about a month ago, and this orchid was totally fine. So although it really, really needs humidity, as you could tell from these aerial roots that dried out, this orchid was fine. The leaves were not wrinkly or anything like that, and it had a bud at that point, and that bud stayed intact. So it went without water for over a week, and I was very nervous at first because I thought these orchids were extremely high humidity loving orchids, and if I couldn't water it, I may find this orchid distressed. But outside of these aerial roots that dried out, everything was perfectly fine. So I'd say that this is a very uh, forgiving orchid and maybe it needs a little bit less humidity than I'm thinking, and I could just do a better job of potting this inside of the pot. So as I mentioned, there is a very airy mix in here, and um, it's just bark. Inside of a basket, there's plenty of air. Everything in there looks pretty good. And the best thing about this orchid is that beautiful flower. So this orchid is from Madagascar. So this is my first um, orchid in the Angraecum and Orangus family. And this beautiful flower, it took a long time for it to develop. It took, was in, it had a bud, if I recall, for three months before it opened up for me. It opened up very abruptly. I just saw it open up a tiny bit and then the next day the flower was fully open. Now this opened for me about a week ago, so I'm curious to see how long it lasts because it has a little bit of fading in the petals, as you can see here. But the showstopper for this orchid is the wonderful nighttime fragrance that it has. So when I first smelled it, it was very overpowering and I couldn't really make out what it smelled like. And then in the next two days, the fragrance actually mellowed out a little bit. And what I can make out is a, a nice, pleasant fragrance of, uh, smells like Johnson & Johnson pink uh, baby lotion a little bit. It's, it has like a very powdery scent. It is pleasant, it's, it's a nice fragrant, and it only comes out at night. So this, this orchid attracts uh, night pollinators and it's, the fragrance is quite strong, so it fills up my grow space at night, which is lovely. Now it's been a week since it's been open and the fragrance has been fading a tiny bit. The first day it was extremely powerful. The next two days it was still very powerful to the point that it um, took over the grow space. And a week later it's not taking the grow space, but I could smell it if I'm very close to it. In terms of how I uh, water this orchid, 
I try to give it, I try to mist it daily. So it does have a high humidity requirement given the aerial roots dried out. But I think if you grow in a pot, you're safe. So everything in here is kept a little bit moist, but it's free draining. So I mist it daily and then I aim to water maybe every, every other day, every three days because they do have a strong moving air source in front of it. I do fertilize this orchid relatively lightly, so I give it about 200, 150 to 200 parts per million of uh, MSU fertilizer. And in terms of the growing conditions, I keep this orchid right next to my cattleyas. So this orchid is getting very bright lights. It's growing under LED lights, under three strips of LED lights that make my cattleyas bloom. So the light that it's getting is pretty strong. And I'm noticing that the strong light is not affecting the leaves in any way. So I believe that this orchid really likes and tolerates strong light. And it may need the strong light in order to bloom. I have not had this orchid long term yet, but from what I've read, this orchid does not require a period of dormancy. So I'm going to be taking care of it the same all year round, where I'll make sure that I keep it... Um, nice and watered every other day to every three days probably in the winter maybe twice a week in the winter is probably what i'll do and then in the summer when things dry quickly i'll probably bump that up to every day because my temperatures here in new york in the summer the humidity finally goes up to about 70 percent 70 80 even 90 percent i've seen it here but the temperatures also go up to about 90 95 degrees and I don't turn on AC in my grow room because the orchids like it. So I just let them get nice and hot. And I just find that my cattleyas, my dendrobiums, and all of these uh, warmth loving orchids, they thrive in that sort of heat. So I'm just gonna let this, um, uh, I'm just gonna give it the same treatment with the temperatures as the other orchids are getting and it should be fine just given where it comes from in the wild. In a nutshell, this orchid is beautiful. This is my first ever Angraecum orchid. I find that it's relatively tough. I mean, I was away for eight days and it, this didn't get water and it showed no signs of stress other than some of these aerial roots that dried out. So I think um, in short, this just needs an airy mix, very, very chunky mix here. This is how I'm growing it currently anyway. And I think it does fine. The roots inside of the pot that get more humidity do much better. And this orchid is doing really well for me. It's blooming. The, the bloom has a beautiful nighttime fragrance. And I'm curious to see how it does over the summer once I've had it long term. It seems to really enjoy bright lights. And I'm looking forward to getting more Angraecum type orchids. I love the beautiful flower here. It's just absolutely beautiful, very simple flower, yet highly, highly fragrant. If you like that sort of uh, powdery, powdery fragrance, I think you'll really like this one. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to give other Angraecum orchids a try. Anyhow, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more orchid care content. I focus mostly on growing indoors in my apartment, but be sure to check out the other channels uh, for Ninja Orchids, Orchidea, and Ed's Orchids. We all have very different growing conditions and you'll be able to learn how they take care of this orchid as well. Take care everyone, bye.